So how does it do that? Where does the moisture come from? If, if when I mixed the cement and the sand and the water together and it turned into this dry, gravelly mix, where did the moisture come from? Where did all that workability come from? Well, it's important to realize that when you make concrete, you're really putting more water than the concrete needs. There's a certain theoretical amount that the cement needs to hydrate, and then everything beyond that is called water of convenience. Well, what we're trying to do is minimize that water of convenience, and that's where your shrinkage comes from, and that's where a lot of problems come from. Well, if you had a very powerful microscope and you could look inside the concrete, I've kind of drawn the schematic to, that illustrates that, you're looking at individual cement particles floating in water. Now, cement particles are very, very fine. They're roughly a tenth the diameter of a human hair. They vary in size, just like sand particles vary in size, and just like gravel particles vary in size. But they're very, very tiny. And very tiny particles have unique characteristics that are not shared by large particles like sand and gravel. Um, when you get down in, on the microscopic scale like this, these are 10 nanometer, uh, 10 micrometer size, um, you get electrostatic properties. There's static electricity, if you will, becomes a dominant force in the microscopic world of cement particles. And your pigment particles are the same, similar sizes and your proposalins are similar sizes and things like that. So all these little tiny particles are influenced by the fact that they're in water and water is a polar molecule and these individual chunks of cement attract water to them and they get an electric charge and they tend to stick together and they form these clumps. And so I've on the left side of the screen I've kind of drawn schematics of these large spongy open almost like bubbles of, of particles stuck together. And these particles, or these clumps I should say, they, they can trap mixed water inside them. So you're f just, just like if you used a porous aggregate, you'd, you're actually losing mixed water. You have less mixed water available to act as a lubricant. And those big chunks act like rough chunks of gravel. You know, gravel's hard to, rough gravel's hard to move around. It doesn't flow easy if you try to stick your hand in a pile of gravel, there's a lot of friction. Well, these big chunks of, of cement clumps act like big chunks of gravel, although they're very, very still microscopic. They don't move around each other very well. So you, you've lost some of your mixed water or trapped it, um, and these particles are now big and rough and angular and they don't move around each other. And that's why that mix seems so dry. That's why that mix was so difficult to work with. It's, you would be so tempted to add water to it, but obviously just by adding some powder there was more than enough water in there. And this is this is sort of the insight, this is the secret of superplasticizers or, or water reducers in general, is that they free up that trapped water, they break up those cement particles and now instead of acting like big chunks and clumps, they act more like separate discrete particles that can move around each other and because they're not trapping water there's more lubrication. It's the water is kind of like the grease of of your of your ingredients, and it helps things move around. Um, this is a little bit more technical, uh, where you can see the positive and negative charges of, of the particles and how water gets stuck in between. Um, the different strengths of water reducers have different degrees of effectiveness. So I'm going to mention low range, mid range, high range and, and whatnot. And the stronger the, the water reducer, the more it helps break these, these clumps up. And the strongest of the super plasticizers that I'm going to cover, the strongest of the, the water reducers, um, which are the strongest of the super plasticizers, are called, the chemistry is called polycarboxylate. And the chemistry behind them is even more comp uh, complex and more sophisticated because instead of just acting like a dryer sheet that you throw in your dryer so your socks don't stick together, these actually have polymers that, that coat the particles and act like a physical barrier that helps separate the particles. It's called steric repulsion. It's pretty cool technology and that's why 
self SCC or self consolidating concrete uses these polycarboxylates. They, you can use a lot less water and still get a lot of lubrication. So your particles just slide around each other. Very, very potent, very powerful, very versatile. 